Corporate Finance Presentation, Convertible Securities. Get ready, it's time to take our chance with Corporate Finance. Convertible securities are securities that can be converted from one asset type into another asset type. One of the most common types of convertible securities being convertible bonds, which have the option but not obligation for the bondholder to convert the bonds into some number of underlying stocks. Note that the conversion feature makes the securities a lot more complicated for us to estimate what the value of them should be. In other words, if we think about the stocks or if we think about the bonds, the fact that their basic type of investments is great because that allows us to value them and group them and look at the market valuation for related bonds, for related stocks and be able to value them a lot more easily. When we have something like a convertible bond, then we can value it from the bond side of things, looking at comparable bonds, for example, which do not have the convertible feature. And we can look at it from the stock side of things, looking at the stocks as if we were to convert them and the value of the stocks if converted. So we'll run many different practice problems doing this type of thing in both Excel and practice problems outside of it. So companies that issue convertible securities will usually use call features to maintain some control over the investment. So for example, if we have the convertible bonds, they might have the convertible feature and there could be benefits that we'll talk about as to why the company would add the convertible feature. And there are benefits of course to the investors. There's pros and cons on both sides of the transaction, but one of the cons to the corporation is that uh, they have no real control over what the market price of the stocks will be. So they may try to implement a little bit more control by having a call option as well, which also kind of complicates the level of the security that would be involved, allowing, for example, in the situation of a convertible bond, them to call back at a certain given price the bond. The performance of convertible securities can be influenced by the underlying stock price. So when we think about the trading of the convertible securities, one way we can measure the value of the securities is to think about what the underlying stock price would be and what the value would be if the conversion option was exercised to that number of shares that could be converted into at the current market price because we know what the market price of the actual shares are. And then that's one way we can get at basically the valuation or at least the starting point of it for the convertible bonds. When compared to investment options that do not have a convertible feature, convertible securities usually have a lower payout. So in other words, if I'm the company issuing the convertible bonds, then the fact that you have a conversion feature means there's going to be more security to the investor on the downside because they are open to the upside, meaning if the stock price goes up, they can convert to the stocks and that would be good. On the downside, if things go down, they still have the bond. So that ability, that ability and that more kind of flexibility on the investor side of things usually means that the issuer of those bonds, the corporation can do so at a lesser amount, meaning they'll have lesser interest payments typically for the bonds, which can be beneficial to the issuer of the bond. Convertible securities, the conversion ratios, the number of shares of common stock a debenture can be converted. So if we're talking about convertible bonds, that's the number of stocks that can be converted into will be the conversion ratio. When convertible debenture is initially issued, conversion ratio to the common stock is outlined. So they're going to outline, in essence, if you're talking about, for example, convertible bonds, then how many stocks could that convertible bond be converted into? that then conversion ratio. Conversion price, generally calculated by the par value of the bond divided by the conversion ratio. So we're talking par value, not the market value to get to the conversion price. We also have the conversion value. That's the amount an investor would get if the bond is converted to the common stock. So that's one common form, one of the basic common formats that we'll try to value these convertible bonds into we'll take a look at, well, what if they converted it to stocks? Because if they converted the bonds to stocks, then I know what the stock price is because the stock is trading on the market and they're, simple, they're a simplified type of security. And therefore I can value the number of stocks where I can't value the convertible bond as easily, given the fact that it's kind of a hybrid between a bond 
and a stock. So I can imagine the conversion option being exercised and then look at the price of the stock given the fact that I know the price of the stock because they're trading on the market. So it may be calculated by multiplying the conversion ratio, the number of shares that you can convert the bond into, by the market price of the common stock. Now this is something we'll do many, many times in our example problems. Highly recommend looking at example problems. The conversion premium is the added value that a convertible security has due to its conversion option. So typically we'll think about the conversion premium thinking about, for example, the conversion value, getting that value, comparing that, for example, to the bond price that it's currently selling for. The difference between the two being what we might consider, you know, the premium for the option to be. Then we have the pure bond value is the attempt to find the bond value uh, as assuming the bond did not have a conversion option. And this is the other angle that we can kind of look at these convertible securities from. We, we looked at it from the angle of converting them to the stocks and then trying to value the stocks to help us value the convertible security. We can also look at bonds, look at similar type of bonds that do not have the conversion premium and figure out what the relative value of them would be in an attempt to value these convertible bonds. Note that the convertible bonds themselves, unlike stocks and unlike bonds themselves, do not you know, have a, a similar thing for a large market of them out there. So we can't simply look at other convertible, convertible bonds as easily as we could if we were to have the bonds themselves, just a straight bond. And then we can look at straight bonds within similar categories and value them appropriately. Or if we're looking at stocks that are actually trading on the market so we have the convertible bond, the risk discount. That's the investor accepts lower expected return in exchange for lower risk. So when you're thinking about the risk reward from the investor side of things, the fact that the risk goes down might mean they would accept then a lower reward, lower interest payments that then allowing the investor to benefit with regards to convertible bonds because that does lower the risk, you would think, and therefore they would, they would be... Uh, happy to have the lower risk and that helps possibly the, the issuer of the bond the corporation who possibly wants to issue the bond at a lower interest rate so we had the bond floor which is the minimum the minimum value uh, a convertible bond should trade for calculated using the discount value of its coupon plus the redemption value the difference between the convertible bond price and its bond floor is the risk premium the value that the market puts on the option to convert a bond to shares of stock so what are the cons some of the cons for the convertible bonds the buyer usually pays a premium over the conversion value for the convertible bond. So when you're investing in it, you're usually paying a premium. The debt buyer usually gets lower market interest rates because once again, the risk for them as an investor goes down. Therefore, they're willing to accept the lower interest rates. That's the point of the convertible option oftentimes. There's often a call option that will be applied to it as well because remember the corporation that's issuing this the investors open to the upside, meaning if the stocks go up in value, they're open to that upside and the, the issuer doesn't have any control over that upside. One way they can manage the control to limit it, cap it at some point is to issue a call option on it as well. So the convertible security pros to the corporation on the corporation side of thing, the interest rate is usually lower. That's the point because they're going to give the conversion option, which is a little bit more complex. The, the corporation doesn't have as much control over the conversion option. It could, it could lead to a lot of things that, you know, they don't, that are outside of their hands. Why would they do that? Well, by doing that, maybe they can issue it for a lower uh, interest rate. So it may allow smaller corporations to enter the bond market. So smaller corporations might be able to compete in the bond market when, when they may not otherwise be able to with conversion options available. Convertible security cons to the corporation. The convertible bond market is, is small compared to the non-convertible bond and common stock market. So the, the common stock and bond market, of course, much larger for the standard types of securities. And the companies selling convertible securities are generally smaller and growing fast. And small companies may have low credit ratings and high risk when they're issuing the convertible securities. We have the forcing of the conversion. A call option provision can be used to force conversion when it needs to shift outstanding debt to common stock. So if they have that call option in place with the convertible security, 
the exercise of the call option may then force the investors to basically make a choice to either convert the securities or take the basically the call option depending on the circumstances so that's one of the reasons the call options could be tacked on to the convertible security to add that number another level of basically uh, control over some type of security which has less control or less defined outcomes as basic bonds or stocks so it may improve uh, composition of the company balance sheet by decreasing debt to equity and debt to asset ratios so in other words if you've got the bonds out there and basically you force them to convert the bonds to stocks then what will happen is now you've got at that point in time you've got less bonds or debt out there you're going to be paying less on the interest side of things and you've converted the financing from a debt situation to an equity type of situation which means you're going to have more more stocks that are going to be out there so when you're looking at your mix between your debt and equity then if it's beneficial to the company to have that mix be more leaning on less debt and more to the equity financing than being able to force the conversion of the convertible bonds from debt bonds to to equity financing could be beneficial can help a company increase its cash flow by giving lower or no dividends instead of interest payments so if you basically say that you have a bond outstanding you're obligated by the bond to give interest payments but if you can get them to convert the bonds to the stocks then you have more control over the cash flows because then you're not required to give out the interest the interest payments as you are with the debt you have the option then of as the company to decide whether or not you want to pay out dividends or not now obviously you might be tied into your dividend policy your dividend strategy whatever the nature of the company will be but the dividends are not required to be given out and you have more control over that whereas of course the interest with regards to debt financing is something that's obligated to be given out with the terms of the bond it, the dilution is going to be a factor as well when you got the convertible bonds because note of course if they convert the bonds now you've got more stocks that are going to have to be issued out there so if you got a convertible bond you've got this unknown out there for everybody basically that the conversion could take place which could cause more stocks to be out there and if you look at the underlying value of the company now more stocks out there would would mean that things like the earnings per share calculation will change right so the convertible securities may lead to added common stock in the future and that could lead to the different uh, measures of earnings per share may be needed so that means we might have the basic earnings per share that we'd have to calculate which would be the calculation you know the earnings of the company divided by the number of shares outstanding and then the diluted earnings per share which would basically be let's adjust this for as if there was an, there was the exercising of the the conversion of say the bonds and then we're going to have more shares that are going to be out there which is going to result in a lower amount of the earnings per share given the fact there's more shares out there although we'll have to take into consideration interest impacts as well if the conversion took place but in essence generally there'd be more shares out there and that would mean that the earnings per share calculation would be lower